businesses love chasing influencers that gift them to pay them to promote their products. And influencers, they love being chased, gifted, and paid. What do both businesses and influencers not think about during their courtship? Is how do they properly manage and declare their VAT? There's a there's a law, there's a VAT law in the UAE that has clear guidelines on how an influencer needs to deal with a business or a business needs to deal with the influencer. We're joined today with, with Bastian. He's a senior VAT advisor for Baker McKinsey, Habib Al Mullah. He will clarify what businesses and influencers need to do. What is Bastian's background? Deloitte? Done. KPMG, done. PwC, done. And now he's working with Baker McKenzie, Habib Mullah, and his focus has been in the region and in Europe on VAT. Hello, Bastian. Thank you for joining us today. So, Hello. what are businesses currently doing wrong while engaging with influencers, and what do they need to do? Hi, Evan. Thank you for having me. Um, yeah, just just to thank you for the introduction uh, to tell me where, where I worked. Uh, um, so it's a large number of places. Um, yes, so to, just to start, um, th there's no, in, in the VAT law, there's no specific reference to influencers or artists or any, any in any form. Uh, the VAT law is very broad. So anyone, any person that is a natural legal person that carries out the economic activity on an independent basis and ongoing basis is in principle subject to the VAT law. Uh, that person is also required to register or apply for VAT registration if it exceeds the VAT registration threshold of uh, 375,000 dirham annual revenue uh, turnover, that is. So every business, whatever, if, if it is a freelancer, if it's an influencer, they should assess whether they carry out an economic activity whether they provide services and whether there is consideration, whether they receive consideration in return for that. And if they exceed the thresholds, they need to think about applying for VAT registration. Um, so what are the steps that you'd recommend the business to? Because a lot of bus businesses, when I speak with them, when I ask them, what are, what are they doing on digital, on, on the internet and ads and so on? They say, oh, we're doing Facebook and Instagram. And, and influencers, they bundle the influencers as part of their digital endeavors, although it's not technically that. But so, so those who like to bundle everything there together, what are your recommendations for those businesses who are looking to engage with an influencer? What are things that they have to check first? If that influencer has a license, do so they have a VAT TRN number, a registration number, or, you know, because usually they obsess about how many followers the, the, does he or she have and things like this. So what are things that they need to look at? Yeah, so, so from a business, uh, a purely a business perspective, um, when they engage with, with an influencer, uh, the, the only thing that should, they, they should really check from a VAT perspective is that when the influencer uh, issues an invoice with a VAT amount on it, like 5% VAT in the UAE, they should verify whether that invoice is correct and whether uh this influencer is actually registered for vat um so that that is on on the business because they they will want to reclaim that vat back uh as as input tax and set it off against their own output uh tax um they they do they do not have to check whether uh the influencer should have been registered for vat if it's not that responsibility is is on the influencer they should assess themselves whether they need to register for VAT. So if I'm if I'm a business and I and I uh, I will receive an invoice from the influencer, assuming that influencer can issue issue an invoice for me as a business, I need to check the basics, right? So it has a tax invoice, it has a VAT TRN if they've registered for this, the five percent is there. So that uh, that is what I uh, what I need, I need to look for. Um, is there a flag for me as a business if I ask the influencer to say where's my invoice uh, and they don't have one? Uh, is this a flag for me as a business? Well, because influencers are are are, are uh, creators, right? They're not they don't have this the strongest business acumen. At least they don't look at themselves as businesses. And I'll get to them now uh, in a bit. But they don't look at themselves as, as businesses, although they should. Um, so that that might come as a surprise to them, and so on. So, so what should I do as a business if I ask for an invoice from the influencer and they they're lost or confused? Well, I 
I think uh, just purely from a VAT perspective, the, the, the risk in, in, in this respect is, is, is completely on the influencer because the influencer is providing a service uh, to the business. So the influencer has to provide, has to determine whether he needs to, to charge VAT. Um, so the invoicing is not, I mean, if you, if you want to issue a tax invoice, it needs to meet the requirements in the VAT legislation. But just from a commercial perspective, uh, I think as a business, you would also expect an invoice for, from, for your accounting purposes. And um, I mean, I, I would normally not pay anyone if they don't give me any uh, <laughs> invoice or a response for payment because there's no way to track it or, or have any proof that I actually paid this. So that's, that's just from a, from a business perspective. But from a VAT perspective, um, if they don't issue a, a tax invoice and they don't charge VAT, the, from, the, from the perspective of the business, there's, there's no real issue. Uh, the reason I bring this up is because um, a lot of the businesses, they're, uh, they're very enthusiastic about an influencer. It's like, oh, Ayman, this influencer spoke about us, or we did this with this influencer. They're very ecstatic about it, and technicalities of an invoice or not is not is not something that, 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 that they tend to worry about. They always tell me about, oh, we work with this girl or this guy. They have X million followers or X 100,000 followers and so on. That's why I bring this up. So if an invoice comes up, uh, and how does the how does the business recognize it from an accounting perspective? Is it under... Uh, like a marketing expense, or, or how how would you how how uh, how would they recognize it? Yeah, they they I think they should they should recognize it as as a, as a marketing expense. Um, and what 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 I do want to to add uh, is that if the business would provide the influencers some like free goods or an experience, or like. If it's a car dealership, they, they give the influencer a, a car for, for a couple of months to, to drive in, then this, this is being regarded as a supply by, by the business. So the business is giving the car uh, to the influencer for the influencer to use. Then the business needs to determine, uh, well, they need to issue an invoice for that the supply of that car or for giving away these goods because it would be treated as, as a normal supply for a VAT. So I'm, I'm not an influencer. So if, if, if a business would sell, sell a good to me, uh, he, he would charge VAT if it's registered for VAT. But if, if it instead uh, gives these goods for free to an influencer and the influencer then that markets the product, it should be treated in the same way. This, giving away this goods should also the business should also charge VAT uh, if it's registered and if it's not registered uh, but is counting whether it exceeded the threshold then this free product that's given away should also be included in in the calculation of that threshold so so practically if I'm an influencer and I receive a, a 3000 dirham handbag uh, I receive it for free I still need to pay a 5% VAT on this as an influencer. Yeah. Yeah. The business, they, they should uh, charge VAT on, on top of, of that. Um, wh whether they, they actually invoice uh, or like ask the influencer to pay the 5% or whether they, they pay it at, at the 5% out of their own pocket, that, that's up to the business. I think the, the whole concept of free product loses its value if if you say here's a three thousand bag but please pay me the five percent in cash i don't think it works so i think the business can consider paying that from their own pocket uh but they should, should still issue the invoice and and actually give that invoice to the customer because this is a requirement under the law that the invoice should be delivered to the customer um so it that there has has to be some invoicing and the VAT on, on that product should be uh, remitted to the tax authorities via the VAT return. So let's look at this at the parallel side, which is the influencer themselves, right? So they usually, they have something arriving at their door. 
Um, so they, they receive random gifts in hope that they like it and, they, and they'll share it with their friends. And others are more formal where they say, look, you know, we're going to engage you for three posts. We're going to pay, you know, uh, this is our budget or, or the influencer has a rate sheet that says, I'll, you know, if I visit your store, I, you'll, you'll pay me this. If I, if I post three posts, I'll, you'll pay me that and so on. So that's usually um, the case. So what do, would I need to do as an influencer? Because influencers, you know, for those influencers who are watching, you are a business. I know it's uncool. I know it's not uh, it's not as fancy as as you think it looks like in, in the lifestyle they're trying to build. But at the end of the day, if you're getting free products or uh, uh, cash for work that you're doing, and why another, you're a business and you should be proud of it and you should find a way to properly monetize, to properly recognize VAT, to have people to help you with your, you, with your accounting and taxation and look at your profitability on this. So because as you grow, and if you look at the global uh, influencers, you look at they build the huge businesses, and this is this is a, a core part of, of 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 what we're asking Bastian for advice for. So, Bastian, what's your advice for uh, influencers who a lot of them they don't think about the business aspect of this. They think about their audience and they think about the creative angle that they need to promote a product. So, what would your what your advice be to them? Yeah, it's it's, it's ba yeah basically the same as for, for, yeah for, for the business side because. Um, well, first of all, you should consider: uh, Am I am I doing this on an ongoing, ongoing, independent basis? Because if if you do a one-off uh, marketing promotion for a product, you might say, okay, this is a one-off thing, and it's 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 not really uh, a business from a VAT perspective. But I suppose that the aim is to to do this on an ongoing basis and to uh, generate. Uh, Ongoing income from, from this activity, so it would it would fall within in the definition of, of a business from a from a VAT perspective. And then you need to consider whether you exceed the threshold of uh, three hundred seventy five thousand, and that does not only include like monetary payments, but also like the gifts and the experiences that you receive in return of the services that you you provide. Just to say it very. Uh, um, legalistic, you, you provide services for, for consideration, which is the free experience of the goods. Um, this, this is known as a barter transaction, where basically two, two supplies are, are made by, by each party of the barter transaction. Um, so in, in the case of, of, of the handbag, if you receive that handbag for 3,000 dirham, uh, clearly, the, the the business that gives you this handbag values your service at three thousand dirham. So therefore, uh, your turnover is three thousand. And if you add all those gifts together and you exceed the threshold, then then you should consider uh, applying for VAT registration. Once you're registered for VAT, you should also be uh, charging VAT. And 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 in the three thousand example again, you have. To, charge 3,000 plus 5% and issue an invoice for that. I, I like your perspective on this when you're saying that when a business gives gifts an influencer 3,000 dirham bag, that means they're valuing their service or collaboration at, at, that, at that value. So that's also one way to do it. So, and that's why I understand why if you receive gifts throughout the year that exceed 375,000 dirhams, that means your business uh, uh, has received uh, that amount of monetary goods, even if it's non-cash. Hence, you qualify to exceed the threshold, and hence uh, the the uh, the need for VAT. Um, is this something that uh, businesses worry about? Uh, you know, that, that discuss with you. Say, you know, is this something that comes up of we're dealing with influencers or marketing and so on? Because usually, market the I don't think the marketing team is the one that that deals with with you from a VAT perspective as well. So, is this something that comes up or or, or not so much? Well, it it hasn't come up uh, in a. No, not 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 in a professional circumstance, but I I think uh, no th this this question is is doesn't really only apply to influencers or uh, artists. It, it applies to all all freelancers in, in the end. Um, if if you um, are a fr fr freelance journalist or uh, like a handyman, uh, it it also applies to that person. So it's it's. It's from a VAT point of view. It's, it's interesting to understand when a person, yeah, from making your hobby your business, 
uh, it's kind of when does it become a business and that 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 is very gray uh so because i worked in other jurisdictions this question came up more often but here in the uae it hasn't hasn't come up yet because i think the perception is that uh, yes, I am only in business if I have registered a company or if I have a, a license to do this business. But VAT really applies irregardless. So it is a very independent concept. Um, and it's, like I said, it's the concept of business is, is very broad and captures all activities by any person. So it, it tries to capture everything. And you have to also have to regard it from the perspective of... of um, fairness or, or uh, because a marketing company that would could provide similar services as you would as an influencer would do uh, they would have to charge VAT um, so why should they have all the burden but you as an as a independent freelance influencer ha has a lighter burden because you're kind of competing with them so you're subject to the same uh, tax regime Um, I, I'm with the aspect of self-perception because a lot of them think that they're on the creative side and this doesn't apply to them. Um, one last thing, uh, Bastian. Um, YouTube uh, also, because there's a growing trend about taxation regarding services and YouTube and influencers and so on. So there's a recent change in, in, in uh, the taxation with YouTube in the U.S., uh, you know, related to influencers, even if they're outside the U.S. Um, are you aware of this? Do you know if this applies for influencers in the UAE and Saudi? Yes, yes, uh, I'm, I'm aware of this this change. I, I'm not totally sure whether it's a change or just like uh, similar to, to the UAE, where it's just like a kind of reminder or a kind of change in, in, in uh, approach. Um, yes, yes, I, 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 I'm aware of it. And I understand it only applies to income generated from through the YouTube platform from US, US residents. So... Um, and if if there is a tax treaty, a double tax treaty between the U.S. and and the country where the influencer or the YouTube creator is resident, then uh, the tax rate might be reduced. So the the standard tax rate is thirty percent or twenty four percent, but if there's a tax treaty in place between the two countries, it might be reduced to like fifteen or zero percent. Um, Unfortunately, there's no tax treaty between the UAE or KSA and the US, so that means that the, that the rates, the full rates apply. So in, in the case of a business, I think they say if it's a business registration, it's 30%, and if it's individual registration, it's 24% of the income generated from US viewers. So it, it is a... It, yeah, it is a development that the influencers in, in the UAE should be aware of, and it's recommended to apply with, with the information request, uh, because otherwise they, they will just apply the full rate. Um, so it, it's, it's, I think it's recommended to apply uh, comply with it. Okay, so if my video on YouTube uh, has a, a million views, and from the ads generated, I would earn $10,000 on this, uh, you're saying that from those $10,000, uh, there's a subset of those that are only in the U.S. So those who see them in Europe or the Middle East and Saudi and so on, uh, uh, there's no tax uh, uh, application, at least as of yet, on this. So if there's uh, if there are uh, $2,000 of that uh, $10,000 that is from uh, U.S. viewers, I would owe as an influencer the 24% uh, uh, that you mentioned. So what... Uh, uh, what uh, YouTube would do is, is they would deduct that 24% of that amount and and deduct it from from my payment and and they and they send it my way. Yeah, yeah. There's not uh, there's nothing you have to do. There's no compliance requirements for the influencer. It's but it's just, money gone. It's, 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 yeah, that's 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 the only uh, upside. Um, yeah, it's a withholding tax, so the 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 payer has to withhold the tax. Um, okay. So you, you you receive less, uh, unfortunately. Okay. All right. All right. So if I'm to summarize really regarding influencers and businesses in the UAE, businesses 
for the businesses, Bastian, before they engage with the influencers, they need to recognize that this is a, uh, a business engagement like, like, like they do with any marketing agency, uh, as you mentioned, or marketing resource. And they'd expect from them uh, recognition of this. So either via a proper invoice, uh, uh, for uh, uh, for that, or at least internally, uh, uh, the company will need to, from a VT perspective, make sure that it recognizes this uh, collaboration as a form uh, of of a uh, an invoice where there's five percent VAT, including uh, non-monetary gifts, and this is an important part. So a lot of the influencers based on gifting, whether it's a three hundred thousand dirhams car or a three thousand dirhams bag, there is a, even if it's given away for free, there's a five percent that somebody has to pay, recognize and pay from that perspective. So that's the business perspective, and from the influencers' perspective. You are a business, uh, that's your long-term goal uh, from your uh, content generation and your uh, community uh, building activities and so on. And a solid step towards that is to get a proper license that reflects this and have VET and have a form of an accounting resource to help you uh, uh, recognize this. Uh, thank you, thank you, Bastian, for 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 shedding light uh, on on this uh, topic, especially that there's a lot of this going on in UAE and Saudi, and there needs to be clarity uh, for businesses and influencers to 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 do the right thing. Uh, thank you, Bastian, for joining us today. Thank you. Very good. Uh, thanks. Thanks, Ayman. Thank